The transfer portal has turned college football on its head. Over the past year, you've had thousands of players enter the portal from all different schools, from all different levels of talent, every position. It's unreal. It's the NFL free agency college football edition with seemingly even less rules and more variety. It's fascinating, amazing, whatever you want to call it. And I'm not agreeing with it or disagreeing with it. It's just where college football's going. And we're going to have to accept it unless we're people that can actually impact and change the rules and landscape of the sport, which many of us, probably all of us watching this, cannot. But anyway, today we're not going to be talking about the portal in general. We're going to be talking about two stories, briefly, about two quarterbacks. One is a true freshman, one is nearing the end of his collegiate career. Both are probably going to be in the portal. JT Daniels hasn't announced it yet, that's why I said probably, but it has been rumored by several sources that he discussed with Kirby Smart his future, and that he is going to enter the portal soon. So we're going to be talking about both of these transfer portal prospects, some of the schools they're interested in, what I think about the rumors regarding the school that the schools that are interested in them, pardon me. And that's just what we're going to be talking about for today. Got some Big Ten videos coming up soon, some predictions for the 2022 season as well. So if you want to listen to those, and if you like this video, hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell. And remember to like this video and comment your thoughts down below. So let's get into it. And first of all, talk about Caleb Williams. Caleb Williams, he did his job. That's the simplest explanation of his career so far, a career that has lasted one year. One day, it was decided that Spencer Rattler was crap, is the most accurate word to use. That's what was decided by the staff, He and he was playing like that. He was playing terribly against Texas. Williams gets subbed in. They have a massive comeback win in a big rivalry game, a game that ruined and broke Texas, and a game that helped Oklahoma go to an 11-2 and record with as dysfunctional of a team as they had, instead of potentially going 9-4 or 10-3. and or Williams was 136 of 211, completed 64.5% of his passes, threw for nearly 2,000 yards, 21 passing touchdowns, only four interceptions. He had a 169.6 passer rating. He also had 442 rushing yards on the ground and six touchdowns with 79 rushing attempts. He is talented. I think that he is the best QB that has entered the portal this season, better than Quinn Ewers even. I think that he will likely start on whatever team he chooses to transfer to. Even Georgia, where they have several five- and four-star QBs, USC it would be definite. And the school we're mainly going to be talking about today in regard to Oklahoma, not Oklahoma, Caleb Williams, is the one that is least known and a one that no one would expect, that being the Wisconsin Badgers. Apparently, Wisconsin is potentially in the mix for Oklahoma transfer Caleb Williams. And I'm going to be linking the articles that I am reading down below in my description. Both are by fansided, by the way. So those will be down in the description if you want to give them a read. This episode is just kind of me reporting and giving my analysis and thoughts. The college football landscape has been changed dramatically by the transfer portal. It gives a lot of schools a chance at some really good players they normally wouldn't be able to recruit. It also, of course, gives bigger schools the ability to poach good players from smaller schools, but that's a different conversation entirely. Wisconsin could be one of the teams who gets a great player through the portal, however. There is some buzz going around that the Badgers could be in on former Oklahoma quarterback Caleb Williams. Now, keep in mind, Caleb Williams has said he could go back 
to Oklahoma. He said that in his tweet where he announced he was entering the transfer portal. He's, according to him, just looking at what could be his best option for his future, which is smart, especially when, you know, half the staff just leaves to take a job at a school that you never expected them to go to. But anyway, now we all know better than to take a random Twitter account's rumor seriously, but there are some reports on 24-7 sports message boards where insiders are listing Wisconsin as an intriguing option. It sounds like Caleb Williams is intrigued by Wisconsin because of what Paul Chris did with Russell Wilson when he played for Wisconsin in 2011. Also, with Joe Rudolph, the former OC of Wisconsin, leaving for Virginia Tech to be their O-line coach, it leaves open a position that, if the right hire is made, Williams could be really interested in Wisconsin. And I like, I actually like this. And yes, Wisconsin is the place where QBs go to die. But hear me out here. It's great for Wisconsin. It's not as good for Williams. It's still good for Williams. It's better for Wisconsin. Wisconsin would be the main benefactor if he goes there. Because Wisconsin, in my mind, their O-line is normally consistent. This year it had some rough spots, but their O-line is normally solid. Their running back this year at the end, they found him in Braylon Allen. Their tight ends are always good. Their wide receivers this year were pretty decent. Their defense was one of the best in the country. It was like Georgia's, but with three- and four-star talent that was developed rather than just a ton of five-star talent. Wisconsin is a quarterback away from winning the West, potentially winning the Big Ten. Not likely winning the Big Ten because Ohio State, Michigan, even Michigan State and Penn State have more talent and just overall are a more modern team. But you get in a guy like Caleb Williams, who's a dual threat, he can run, he can pass very well, that raises the ceiling almost infinitely for Wisconsin's offense compared to what it is now. I like I like the concept here of this. And Williams is also interested in USC, as we know, and Georgia. It sounds like those two were the main schools. Recently, it sounds like Wisconsin might be among those two, but I don't know. From how I look at it, he's either likely to go to USC stay at Oklahoma, maybe go to Georgia before he goes to Wisconsin. It would be hard for me seeing him going to Wisconsin. I don't doubt that the relationship is true, but USC, it's coached by the head coach that A, coached him this year, B, Williams has always wanted to play for Lincoln, Lincoln Riley, even when Brock Vandegrift was committed there, Williams wanted to potentially walk on just to be coached by Lincoln Riley. Speaking of Brock Vandegrift, he could hit the portal if Caleb Williams ends up deciding to transfer to Georgia. Again, I'm going to link this article down below if you want to read it. That is my opinion and just talking about Caleb Williams and his transfer situation. I thought the story about him possibly being interested in Wisconsin was intriguing, to say the least. And I will keep everyone updated on this because I made a video about Caleb Williams before, and I think this is one of the more intriguing and impactful transfers of this year. Up next, we have someone who, if we're being fair, is not going to be nearly as impactful. There's just no way. JT Daniels has no legs. He has, I think, a career-high negative like negative 244 rushing yards so he is not going to be nearly the same impact player his stats are worse and since the u.s since usc and georgia kind of last year he hasn't really started for the majority of a season he only played in four games in Georgia's 2020 season, where it looked like he was on the rise. He had a 178.5 passer rating through 10 touchdowns, two picks, completed 67.2% of his passes, and threw for 1,231 yards, threw for over 300 yards per game. 
This year, however, he was benched early midway in the season in favor of Bennett after an injury, never returned to the starting position after it was apparent that he was healthy. Bennett helped Georgia win a national title. JT Daniels was not even played in the SEC championship game or the playoffs, which to me indicates that the staff really doesn't want to have him out on the field or there's an off the field issue that isn't being clarified. So that was interesting. And to be honest with you, Bennett and his performance in the national title and against Michigan kind of proved everyone who wanted Daniels to start completely wrong. JT Daniels' career is he's completed 389 out of 610 passes. He's completed 63.8% of his passes. He's thrown for just under 5,000 yards, 32 touchdowns, 16 interceptions. He has a 142.5 passer rating. So he was a five-star prospect coming out of high school. Again, he hasn't officially announced that he is in the transfer portal, but it is rumored that, I think, what is it, last night he talked to Kirby Smart about his future at Georgia and stated that, too smart, that he was going to enter the portal soon. Some potential options for him. I am going to read an article here, once again, by Fansided. Five ideal transfer destinations for Georgia QB JT Daniels. Number one is Ole Miss, because Matt Corral is departed, and the backup, I already forget his name, did not look that good. The advantage Williams and Dart have over Jackson is mobility in regard to Caleb Williams and Jackson Dart being interested in Ole Miss. However, Kiffin has succeeded with less mobile quarterbacks in the past. Another one is actually Wisconsin as well, because he would be an immediate upgrade over Graham Mertz. Now, what I will say is he won't have nearly the same supporting cast offensively that he did at Georgia. Even last year, you don't have a Brock Bowers at tight end. You don't have a George Pickens at wide receiver or a Ladd McConkey. Your O-line is about equal. You might have a better running back. You're not also... I just... I still think Williams is a better fit. Daniels would be far better than Mertz, though, so this could be a good fit as well. Fansite had also listed Iowa State, California, and USC. If all else falls through at USC, you know, Dart goes to another school. He is in the portal. Don't think he has any intention of coming back. If Williams goes somewhere else besides USC... Maybe Lincoln Riley will just say, you know, all else failed. Why not bring back the guy who was originally supposed to save USC under Clay Helton? Now, the difference here is, even though JT Daniels, in his career, has honestly been kind of a bust, if he goes back to USC, Caleb, I'm not, shoot, Lincoln Riley is very good, amazing, at developing quarterbacks, so... It would not be a surprise if JT Daniels returned, Riley could turn him around in under a season. And last year, under Todd Monken and at Georgia, JT Daniels did pretty well. He looked really good. I mean, there was a reason he was in the odds to win the Heisman this year. Played very well against Cincinnati, had an amazing game, I think, against either Mississippi State or Missouri, where he had video game level stats. He looked really good. He looked reborn at Georgia in 2020, but we saw that with a lot of QBs in 2020. Graham Mertz even being one of them in his first game against Illinois. So though that's JT Daniels' story. We've already talked about Caleb Williams, just my thoughts on both of them. I honestly think with Daniels, Wisconsin would work because they're more of a pro-style older offense system where you don't need a mobile quarterback to do what you need to do. They're more run-focused anyway, and it would be nice to have someone who could pass. USC could work as well, even though Lincoln Riley normally has targeted QBs who can run and use their legs, which JT Daniels can't really do. But that's just my opinion. I'm just a guy talking and voicing my opinion. And that's all I have to say for this video. 
If you like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, click that notification bell, and comment your thoughts on these two down below. Tell me where you think JT Daniels or Caleb Williams would fit best at, and if you were them in their shoes, where would you go? Tell me down below. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys around.